Howdy, howdy. Hey guys, Alan here, back for a long overdue video. It's the end of January right now, January 25th, and I'm recording this. I don't know if you recognize, this is back in uh, the same apartment building that I was in in Ho Chi Minh City. I'm in Ho Chi Minh City. I've been here for three weeks now. Uh, I got um, back to Ho Chi Minh City January 6th. Uh, and originally I planned to stay just for a month. My birthday is January 28th, it's, uh, it's this week. Um, and last year we did this massive joint birthday party with three of my friends here. Uh, and this year we did the same, so our, our big birthday party was last weekend. Uh, and then also on top of that, I'm, uh, we're fundraising right now in Telefuel. We're raising uh, another seed round for that startup. Uh, and a lot of the money and the investors that we're talking to are in Southeast Asia, in Vietnam, Singapore, and then some in Hong Kong as well. Uh, so it made a lot of sense to come out here for the time. And uh, being back here, I've had a great, pers uh, it's given me a ton of perspective uh, on the differences between living in LA. You know, I moved to LA about five, six months ago in September. Um, and then being back here, I mean, it's just been super exciting, super energizing, and refreshing. I feel a little bit like a fish back in water in many, uh, in some senses, uh, because I spent, you know, I did live here for a long time, about five, five and a half, <clears throat> almost six years. Um, and so with the benefit of a lot of hindsight and some time in LA and then being back here for a month, um, I have a lot of thoughts and, and thinking about you know the differences between the two lifestyles. Um, and so th that's what I wanted to share in this video. Uh, basically, you know, for my own purposes, as much as, you know, to, uh, for my own documentation, as much as to, to share with you guys as well. So <clears throat> where to begin? I think, you know, I lived in, so just for context again, I lived in Vietnam for five and a half years. I moved to Vietnam in 2014. And then I, uh, you know, I split time during, you know, over the last five, six years as I lived in Vietnam, I was still traveling a decent amount, going back home, visiting friends and family in the US a few months every year, um, but really spending the majority of my time in Vietnam. And uh, grew, I mean, loved it almost immediately. I mean, Vietnam, uh, you know, some nuances about the uh, living as an expat in Vietnam. You know, Vietnam is technically, it's a big city. It's over 10 million people. I think it technically by, by population, it's bigger than in LA or New York City. But when you live as an expat and you're confined really to the English speaking community, <clears throat> the English speaking subset of Ho Chi Minh City is, is much, much smaller. It's much tighter. And for the most part, we spend our times in concentrated in a few districts, you know, district one, district, a little bit of Binton district, a little bit of district two. Um, and that makes the city feel really small. I mean, you have this big city amenities with a small, tight knit community. And in that way, you know, the social fabric of Ho Chi Minh City became really tight. If you came here, as I have friends that have been here for this week and uh, friends that are visiting from out of town and they're in town for literally like 10 days or something or two weeks. And by the end of those 10 days or two weeks, they, you know, the first night they go out, they, they start meeting people, they see them again second or third day, they see him again the fourth and fifth day, we're getting dinners together, we're going out for coffee, we're, um, there's always you know a group of friends getting together in the evening, whether that's for dinner or to go for drinks or to go to a club on the weekends. Uh, and really quickly, you can start to develop these friendships because in a, in a span of two weeks, you can you know see people over and over and over and over again. Um, and then everybody tends to know each other in this like English speaking subset. So you know, you, uh, I had a friend last night who, who um, you know, matched with a girl on Tinder, and he came out to our table at at, uh, at the lounge that we were hanging out at. And the girl was there with some of her friends. She's friends of our friends, and it's like a small enough community that these kinds of like serendipitous encounters happen regularly, daily. Um, and it's like a friendship and relationship incubator in that sense. Um, and that's the first major difference between Ho Chi Minh City and, and Los Angeles that I've been appreciating. So, the way I've been explaining it to my friends here in Vietnam is I love Los Angeles. I love the people. There are amazing people in Los Angeles, uh, in LA. Uh, I have some, some of my you know, brothers and sisters, like from other mothers and other misters that like, you know, I'm, I can't imagine not, you know, not knowing at this point. I uh, can't imagine, uh, go, you, know, they're, they're, you know, they'll be invited my t to my future wedding kind of thing. And um, I love them. But the, but the challenge of LA, the social fabric is so loose and so loose knit because we all live so far away from each other. There's a lot of friction to getting to one another. And not only is there friction if we decide to get together, but even deciding to get together happens less occasionally because there's so much more going on. So I have friends that actually don't live that far from me. Like I live in um, Sawtell near Santa Monica and I have a friend that lives in, I have a friend that lives probably a 
10 minute walk, a three to five minute drive away, like north. And I see him maybe once every two weeks. Um, I have a friend that lives in Culver City, maybe a 10 minute drive to the east. And I see him once every two weeks. Um, and they don't know each other, you know, like, no, like LA is so sprawling and so spread out um, that even as I penetrate these communities of like, whether it's entrepreneurship or culture or um, nightlife and like, and like uh, music and like uh, subgenres of music, like concerts and music festivals and raves, um, it's, there's, there's, it's, there's, there's just so many people that it's just, you feel like a drop in the ocean. Um, so the, the, the relative um, differences in social kind of uh, fabric of between a, a sprawling city like LA and a tight city like Ho Chi Minh City, I realized that, um, you know, for my kind of personality and, you know, I, I, I'm, I gravitate towards, I lean towards like extroversion and I lean towards like, I like to like roll with a big crew and have a click and, and um, be part of a big community. You know, that I have in, in Ho Chi Minh City and that's something that, you know, it takes time to develop in LA for sure, but I, I know people that are born and raised in, in Southern California. They, they've lived in LA or around LA their whole lives. And even them, I, I observe that they don't have, they, you know, their expectation, what's normal for them in terms of how often they see their friends and how often they get together in big communities and big groups um, is a different normal. So I don't even think it really even changes with time. I, don't, I just think that your definition of your expectations change when you're in a, in a, in a city like LA with, with its makeup. LA has a, has a uh, L, people in LA have a reputation for being, among other things, flaky. And I think that's a kind of a, it, there, there's a, a kernel of truth to that, um, to that uh, perspective, but I, I kind of think that it's not the people's fault. I think it's the city's fault um, or fault. I think it's I think it's due to the city. So you know, take Al and put him in Ho Chi Minh City, and he's less flaky because everything's so tight. It's easy to keep plans and make plans. And um, take Alan and put him in Los Angeles, and all of a sudden he's a you know there's so much more friction to doing things, and you know you have to make plans far in advance, or some oftentimes, and so you know plans fall through, and uh, and that's where I think like. The city itself, LA itself, makes people more flaky, um, and, it, and it makes it harder to develop relationships over time. So that's one of the, the uh, major challenges that I um, that I've or challenge. It's one of the major differences that I've observed um, going from Ho Chi Minh City to Los Angeles and back. Um, the second uh, major disparity that I've observed is uh, is the relative standard of living. <clears throat> so here you can see I'm in a nice. Uh, you know, kind of classy condo. It's a one bedroom. Uh, not much of a view to speak of <clears throat> as this other uh, condo goes up, but we're here on the 14th floor. You know, it's all right. Um, and this place I'm, I'm paying for a short-term rental, you know, for, for a long-term rental, if I got a lease, it'd be about 850 US dollars a month or 900 US dollars a month. I'm paying about a thousand US a month because I'm doing short-term month to month right now. But, um, you know, in, in LA, I'm sharing, a, you know, it's solid, uh, a two bedroom, for that's th almost three thousand dollars a month, and it's not like <clears throat> it doesn't have a, the building doesn't have amenities. It's kind of like a it's kind of a, a nice, basic, decent size, um, but you know it's a, it's a uh, and it's it's unfurnished, um, whereas this this one's furnished. So um, and then everything else is also more expensive around it in LA. You, you have to pay a lot more for like transportation and for a car um, if you have a car, and then just like going out um, and doing that kind of thing. Like it's. It's uh, the relative cost of living is much higher to the point to the extent where I've actually tripled, I've three xed my monthly budget going when I went, when I moved to LA, and I'd say that my relative standard of living living kind of maybe decreased by um, maybe in a half, um, and then and then not just that, but you know, <clears throat> the um, the latter, you know, the 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 spectrum of like of relative spending power. You know, there's something, and you know, this is surely you know ego and self-esteem tied up in this. But like, you know, you benefit from being. You, you feel there's a different feeling when you go from a, being a bigger fish in a smaller pond, as as the cliche goes. You know, in, in Ho Chi Minh City, you know, uh, my relative spending power is higher. I can go. I'm pretty much. I have accessible to me like any any of the bars, clubs, or or restaurants. Um, and as opposed to LA, where like there's legitimate like billionaires and and mega mega millionaire athletes and and uh, and movie stars and like business you know like tycoons, legitimate billionaires running around. And LA is a billionaire's playground. Um, 
And so my not only is my relative spending power less, but like on the on the grand in the grand scheme of things, I'm even a smaller drop in the bucket. Um, and that has implications on just you know your general uh, kind of like ambient kind of uh, ego, if you will. Um, so I rec- I recognize that. And uh, so you know it, it, it it's it's a that that kind of transition back and forth again. You just kind of like readjust for what is normal. Um, and uh, and yeah, so you know it makes me think like you know one nuance about my life now in, Ho- in, in LA is that my two roommates who I moved in with, uh, love them, uh, Sungho and Rachel, shout out to you guys. Um, they're a big part of the reason I moved to LA in the first place. Uh, and dear Rachel, she, um, she kicked a lot of ass and got a job at Facebook in, uh, in Menlo Park. So she's moving up there n- like now, like this week, starting at Facebook um, next week. In February, and then uh, and then Sungho is going to follow up in March, and so this apartment that I'm in in LA goes uh, goes on the market. Uh, go, will will end in March, and I don't know if I, uh, frankly, I don't know if I feel the hooks in LA strong enough to keep me there, to keep me in LA past March. So right now, my plan is I extended this Vietnam trip through end of February. Um, I extended this Vietnam trip through end of February now, so an extra month. I have another month here, uh, and then I'll go back to uh, Los Angeles for March. Um, spend that last month with Sungho. Uh, it's gonna be awesome. Get some get some quality. You know, he's my my brother from another mother. Get some quality time in with him, um, and then maybe like wind down some of my stuff. Like maybe sell like the bed and the TV and the the few things that I got to furnish my bedroom in LA in March, and then I'll have um, a few months where like. You know, I plan to go to EDC Vegas in May, and then I, I have, I'm in a wedding in June, both like near or around LA, in or around LA, and then um, and then I'll probably end up back in Ho Chi Minh City. I think uh, it's it's uh, it feels it feels right for right now. You know, I think you know the connections and the relationships that I have here are such that you know, like I, I love the people here, and I and I, I miss it when I'm not around. Uh, and then it's also a great place. You know, as we're still building up Telefuel, I think it's a great place to. Um, operate from. I've been super productive here uh, while I've been in Ho Chi Minh City, and we'll keep that momentum going. Um, so yeah, that's just some thoughts on uh, the differences between Ho Chi Minh City, living in Ho Chi Minh City, and living in LA. Uh, a little bit on a little update on my life, um, kind of woven into that. I also have some thoughts on the three things that for me, like that, that are the most challenging about Ho Chi Minh City. But I'll save that for the next video or for another video here soon. Um, so yeah, long time overdue. I wanted to document this because I do think that there's like, you know, this is a conversation that's coming up regularly in my life. And I, I know that when that starts to happen, that's when I want to sh- document it in a video because it's something, you know, for posterity's sake that I want to look back on, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, or maybe, you know, someday my children or my grandchildren can, can look on this and, and get a sense for what uh, old Papa Allen uh, was going through when, when they were his age, when he was their age. Uh, So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope this was interesting and uh, see you in another video. Peace.